What's up chess player? Let me show you how I try to defeat this 2000 rated player. I continue my speed round tools, so to say. I show you how uh, different challenges, uh, what type of challenges you might get at different levels in chess. So here I'm playing against 2000 rated player. He's playing something weird because you normally don't combine those moves. But let's see if I can explore it. So I'm going to play g3, just trying to continue my development in the most active way. Yeah, now he's playing bishop b4, so it's a very, very weird combination of moves. I mean, without the move g6, everything is perfect, but with the move g6, you're just creating a lot of weaknesses there. Maybe I could have played bishop h6 there, just stopping the castles altogether, but I just want to continue my development normally and yeah, just try to punish him for such a thing. For example, bishop g5 here also creates some... Uh, some difficulties for black. Yeah, you probably should go back, that, but that means you have lost uh, the time, and yeah, doesn't doesn't feel uh, doesn't feel logical from the back side, uh, from the black side. Now a6, I guess trying to take here and play b5, something like that, but I don't know. Feels like it's too slow. Feels like I should have some interesting opportunities now. C5 seems interesting. Just trying to get everything out of it, just trying to block. Let's do that, because such uh, type of positions I always like. I'm just trying to not give my opponent any chances, any counterplay. Without the counterplay, you can't survive in chess. So if you have an opportunity to uh, just destroy all of the counterplay from your opponent, that is something you should always try to do. Okay, let me maybe bring the second rook to the C file so that I'm ready for some implications here. I can of course take here on b6, but then my b4 pawn is not protected, so I'm not sure what is the right way. Maybe rook to b1 first just to protect there. I mean if he plays b5 then it's also not that great, but this time, uh, this way he's having a horrible horrible bishop on b7 and still of course I have some ways to continue my attack. Well, I feel like bishop f4 should be just winning the game immediately here, since the bishop is hanging and the rook is hanging. You can play e5, but that doesn't really solve the problem. Knight takes, for example. Yeah, but that happens oftentimes when you don't have enough space in your position and your opponent starts to create those threats. It's so difficult for you to handle with everything. I mean, bishop c8 was an alternative, but wasting so much time giving me everything, you just can't survive like that. Here, knight takes e5, I don't know, bishop takes, uh, I mean, pawn takes e5 was also possible, but knight takes e5 feels great in order to still uh, let this diagonal be opened, because now after knight h5, I have knight takes b7 probably, and after knight takes f4, I can pick up uh, the rook on b8, and this way I can also take it. Probably my opponent is still hoping to create some counterplay, but it's just too late. You you can't ex play, uh, expect to play the whole game incredibly passive, and then all of a sudden hope for some chances that are gonna appear for you. Chess just doesn't work like that. So rook b6, I'm gonna double my rooks along the b-file, because you can still unpin yourself. Maybe rook should go away now, but so many weaknesses. Now the second rook is coming and basically it's not possible to deal with the threats anymore. The queen is coming and then the bishop is going to be lost. So similarly the game was very simple, but well that is how it works. If you develop all of the pieces, if you are creating the threats at this level, that is basically all you need. I'm not sure if I should take on d5, takes and play c6 and just take it over. Yeah, just play queen somewhere, maybe even e3 just to make sure that uh, that pawn is protected. I guess from an aesthetical point of view, that would be the best thing just to say, hey, have no way to improve your position. You have no way to deal with all of the threats. And so I'm going to just slowly improve my position and destroy you. That is the most beautiful thing there is in chess and I'm just doing it right now. And this knight on h5 is so useless. It is there. But I mean, bishop on b7 is not better. You can see that all of the pieces that black has are extremely passive, and that is why he's losing here. Queen to b2, just tripling along the b-file, simple and beautiful at the same time. So let's see if the opponent is ready to resign. I would, because playing such a position is so devastating. Bishop a5 at least creating one thread, but I can just remove this knight somewhere. I don't know, e2 or a4, I guess it doesn't really matter. And then still, it's not possible to save the bishop on b7. 
I mean, you might say this bishop is doing nothing. Why on earth would you need to take it? But it just needed to penetrate to get through in your opponent's camp. And so free bishop is always, uh, always tastes good to take. Okay, now I guess it's time to resign. I mean, I understand I have uh, 54 seconds, but it's more than enough for such a position. I'm not sure if I should have taken the knight first. Maybe I should, with the purpose just to exchange as, many, uh, as much stuff as possible and simplify the position, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, tell me, please, uh, let me know in the comments, please, whether you um, would resign in such a position much earlier or would you play till the end trying to, I don't know, flag your opponent or something. What is your strategy in terms of that? Because for me personally, in the tournament games, pretty often it happens that I don't really resign where a lot of other chess players would already resign for a long time. And the reason I do it is because sometimes I'm really successful with that. I save those positions where nobody would ever hope for anything. That is why I'm yeah doing it. But of course, in most of the cases, you don't uh, you don't uh, succeed with that. If the position is completely lost, you lose. But nobody has ever uh, lost anything by resigning or by not resigning too early. So why not? Yeah, now. I guess it's time because in such a position you can never expect that your opponent is going to blunder. I mean, that already feels weird. But one time I had a position when I had a rook against two bishops and I guess two pawns. And that was such an incredible position and I managed to make a draw because I sacrificed my rook and that was a stalemate. Okay, finally, our opponent resigned. I hope you learned a lot out of this position, how you get those space and how you use it to win your opponent. Feel free to hit the like button if you enjoyed the game. And in this one, I share with you another incredible game I played where you can improve your level significantly.